Mystic, famous for her choir work for Bring Me The Horizon, her electronics for Earthcaller and her famous viral videos where she adds orchestrals to amazing metal songs, uses solemn tone software and just released this cover. I found that insanely impressive. And so I asked her if she could send me her MIDI files so we could actually learn from them in terms of humanization and how solos can really be pulled off with Odin too. So I got the session right behind me. We're gonna do a deep dive into this MIDI after extracting as much knowledge as we possibly can from her MIDI files. We will also try and see what else we could do in terms of humanization because note that Mystic is incredibly known for her keyboard playing. And so she employed some really smart tricks on the keyboard, but after that there's still some stylistic things you could add on top of that let's have a look so here in the session of course the first track right here is the solo after that we have a print of Mjolnir drums we have a print of Mayo bass and we have a print of the Odin to rhythm guitars of course we are only going to focus on the solo right here so we can kind of just ignore these so heading into the solo here as you can see a lot of things going on right here she's using a variety of different velocities to really have a difference in terms of dynamics if we zoom in right here we actually see that there's a lot of notes overlapping and not all hitting at the exact same time a lot of the notes aren't completely on beat and that is actually also going to help you in terms of humanization of course if your notes are not hitting right exactly with the drums but just slightly late or slightly early that way you're really going to sell it as i said before we also have very different velocities right here not a lot add red velocities mostly green and yellow there's going to be some gaps here and that's because if this is actually played on a real midi keyboard of course sometimes you're going to lift your fingers whereas if you check out some of the midi that i usually program all of the notes are going to be connected because of course it's all programmed so there's no real fingers moving or anything like that so we can keep going here then we have these quick runs here we have even more overlap let's solo this right here and check this out <laughs> One really interesting thing is that if you checked out the programming guitars with Slaughter to Prevail, we actually talked about some of these overlaps right here, creating these interesting harmonic tension moments. And you can actually hear the same right here. If you heard it right here, it's like, eh, that's really like piercing. But that's also going to be happening with real guitar, of course. However, I do have to say the one thing that she does better than almost anyone I've seen before is the use of the mod wheel. So as you know, on a MIDI keyboard, you have your mod wheel and you can kind of program it to do whatever you want. In this case, it is used for pitch bending. And so if we check out her pitch bending right here, you will notice there's a lot going on. And so right here, for example, the very first note even you have these super aggressive pitch bends whenever I'm trying to program a guitar I almost don't dare to make moves like that but of course if you've actually practiced a little bit with Odin 2 with your keyboard and with that pitch wheel so that you actually know what it feels like to go that high but then also back down at like a pretty realistic interval you can create some really really interesting moves that you otherwise couldn't <laughs> And so this is just a really good lesson to learn that sometimes you can go absolutely crazy with your pitch bend modulation. Remember, you don't actually need a MIDI keyboard to do moves like this. You can literally open pitch bend in your DAW. It's gonna be in your piano roll. It's usually gonna be called pitch bend modulation or modulation or something like that. You can literally grab the pencil tool and just draw whatever you want. Of course, don't draw like this, but you can draw whatever you want and create moves like this 
and that way really sell that playing. And I really think that's what makes this performance so cool. If you zoom out, it's basically all this pitch bending going crazy. We can listen a little more. <laughs> This right here was also a really cool trick. You notice how you have this like move up, bam, bam, and then you have this extremely quick little bend, which was really interesting. You heard that? Of course, I can't sing that high, don't mind me. But that's a really interesting trick that I actually don't use myself because I, I had never seen it before. Again, I don't tend to program with Odin on the MIDI keyboard. So it's really interesting to see when someone's really good with the MIDI keyboard, what they can actually do as well. And we can learn from that this way. Now, of course, sometimes in this performance, you're going to have those silences that a real player couldn't really make. Now, in Mystic's case, this is being hidden by the rest of the mix. And so when you just stop the soloing, you don't really notice the fact that those silences are there. However, if you're going to be soloing your guitar, it's going to be a little more obvious. Now, this really smart use of the MIDI keyboard is, of course, very, very awesome. But it's also limiting in some way because there are certain moves you can make when programming manually that you can't necessarily do on your MIDI keyboard. So I figured it'd be interesting to also show you what you could be doing manually after performing like this or just in general. Maybe you're starting manually from scratch. What kind of little humanization techniques could you then use to take this in a slightly different direction in terms of humanization? So right here, I copy pasted her MIDI and then I just made some slight changes to it that might be interesting again when you're not fully just performing on a MIDI keyboard and you're also going to be doing some moves that Honestly, your hands could never do. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to see is a bunch of blue notes here, a bunch of very, very soft ones. And you know what that means in MIDI? That means it's going to be palm mutes. However, in this case, we're not actually going to be using palm mutes at all. We're mostly using the slight attack that the palm mute is going to give whilst also combining it with the little slide trick we saw in the slide tutorial a few days ago. So let me quickly just play this for you and you can see what kind of effect these little palm mutes have. Of course, in an ideal situation, you just have it in the full mix. So let me quickly show you that. <laughs> So why do these little mutes matter? Let me show you. Whenever we have notes right here that are going to be interrupting each other, usually your left hand is going to do a little slide there. You're going to lift your pick up. Your pick is maybe going to slightly hit a string or barely not hit a string. Your hand is going to move. You're maybe going to pick right next to that neck pickup, creating all of these little dissonant harmonic sounds interrupting the actual clean notes. And that's why lead guitar and solos usually have that crunch. Of course, there's also going to be high levels of distortion. There's also going to probably be a bit of a mid boost on those overall tones. But just when you listen to a solo, you always hear that crunchiness in the notes. And so we're essentially recreating that by filling in some of the silence and the transitions between the notes with just these random little crunchy noises. Again, you can focus on it right here. You're like, bam, 
and that of course in solo does nothing but together with the notes just adds a little bit of a human element that you otherwise might not have especially when the move from the one note to the next is big because then we can try and fill a couple notes with multiples of these little crunchy noises of course this is not the exact same as a slide we're still making these palm mutes and if this were an actual slide you might want to make these non palm mutes just like in the slide tutorial from the other day but here let's check out the context again it's working pretty well just check out those little crunchy transitions now, if you find that crunch a little bit too much or you notice, damn, I actually want to reduce the attack a little bit. I also have some tapping key switches right here. So if you load up Odin and you click on the info pane, you can see that A sharp minus one is tapping. And so we have this tapping key switch right here at A sharp minus one on the crunch and then also the next note right here, kind of killing that attack and making that transition a little bit more smooth. Now, of course, if you do this for the whole track, if you did it like this, you would lose all of your pick attack and that would sound far less realistic but if you're just keeping it here and there making a couple transitions a little bit smoother you get less of that guitar pro effect where you have all these attacks just ramming your ears on every single note now one place where i also really like to use that tapping key switch is on faster runs as you can see right here i actually place the tapping key switch on every single note except for the ones on the eight beat that's when i don't have it but all the other notes are losing their attack and that's essentially essentially pretending the runs that you might be making with your left hand. If you're holding a guitar, you might do something along the lines of pick, pull off, pull off, or pick, hammer on, hammer on. And so right here, we're essentially doing the same thing. Again, this first note right here has a pick attack and then these two afterwards don't. And the third one again has pick attack. So it's pick, pull off, pull off, pick, hammer on, hammer on, pick, pull off, pull off pick hammer on hammer on now again if you know exactly how to play this you might place the stopping key switches in some other ways maybe you know oh no this note would never be picked or this note would never be hammered on but in general of course most people in the audience aren't gonna know that difference anyway you're just really trying to sell the effect by sprinkling those little techniques here and there <laughs> And then right here again, we're employing that little technique of just that crunch in that otherwise silent part. Now there's one more little trick you might see here and that's that at the end of these notes where you have these silences because again you might be lifting your fingers from the MIDI keyboard or in real life you might actually just mute your string you might let your left hand go and that way stop the note from happening you're still never going to create absolute silence at that point human hands aren't that perfect they can't make a guitar go completely silent the second that they stop their note that's basically again when I copied that same note and and then I place the exact same note for just a millisecond of palm mute. Again, adding a little bit of that crunch at the end of the notes. You notice the same thing over here, again, where we have those moments where we're lifting our fingers either of the MIDI keyboard or of the actual guitar. And then we're just adding a little bit of those crunchy mutes at the end. And again, if you then put it in the context of the mix, you're not going to be hearing all of these little crunchy sounds, but your mind is still going to be fooled a little bit better because they're just subconsciously still there. Some of them will still cut through. And of course, because of all the distortion on the guitar, some of them are still going to cut through the whole mix regardless. <laughs> I hope you found this interesting. As always, if you want to pick up your own Solemn Tones virtual instruments, you can do so at the link in the description or solemntones.com.